Well, welcome to video number three of the three-part series for the assembly of the AVID CNC. Um, what you see me here is starting the drive assemblies. There's four motors. There's two for the Y-axis, one for the X-axis, and one for the Z-axis. So you're only going to see me assemble one motor here, but it's you're going to do this four times. And what I'm doing here is assembling the motor pulley to the motor itself. Avid says to space this out, or excuse me, to fix it with a 35 millimeter measurement from the base of the motor to the top of the pulley itself. Here I'm uh, putting some Loctite on the two set screws that hold this pulley into place. There's very few places in the installation instructions that call out for the use of Loctite, but this is one of them that does. So make sure that you follow these directions. Uh, we certainly don't want the pulleys flying off during operation. This is called an RNP plate. Again, uh, you heard me refer to another plate in this assembly video as an RNP plate. Uh, this is uh, another RNP plate that attaches to the NEMA 34 motor and it's just held in place with four screws and four hex nuts. So you're going to secure these nuts but not tighten them all the way. And what I'm doing here is removing the plastic nut from the spindle assembly. It comes with a little packaging nut, so you can take that off when you get it. It's, it's not needed. And you're going to go ahead and mount that onto the RNP plate with a spindle drive shaft. It's just pretty easy. It just tightens down with the Allen key. Next thing you want to do is put the drive belt on around the motor pulley and the uh, spindle assembly. And you want to get just the right amount of tension, not too tight, not too loose. It's uh, mostly by feel, you'll know it. It's, you know, when you put an automotive belt on, you know when it's just right. And all you're doing here is tightening down that little concentric nut so the belt gets locked into place. Once you have the belt tension or where you the belt tension where you like it, you can go ahead and fully tighten the four bolts that hold the motor onto the RMP plate. And here we are installing the tension bracket with a little 14 millimeter hex cap screw, and then we're gonna install the actual motor itself. Here you see me putting the pivot shaft and the eccentric collar bearing cap onto the motor and we just go ahead and tighten that down with the Allen key. And here I am on the left side of the machine itself installing the tensioner bracket, the tension bracket. When you mount this spring, uh, Avid says to fully seat it, but not tighten it all the way. I actually call out, once you get it on there, tighten it three revolutions to tension the RP assembly the uh, assembly itself correctly. This is the Z-axis assembly and there's 10 screws that need to be removed, five on each side. So you're going to remove these five screws so you can access the interior holes to mount it on your Z-axis plate which you previously installed on the gantry. And you have to remove these little red dust covers on the left and right side of the z-axis plate as well. Once you get these dust covers off this would be a good opportunity to maybe grease up the ball screw if it needs it. Uh, this is your time to access it while those dust covers are off. 
and you got a good view of the mounting holes. As far as mounting the Z-axis goes, I found it easiest to just uh, mount one hole and then turn it up like I'm doing there. I didn't have an extra set of hands, so it was just easier to do it that way. You, later in the video, you'll see me doing something similar with the spindle itself. And then once you get the Z-axis in position and at least a couple screws in, just go ahead and insert the rest of them and tighten them all down. I'm just using my cordless screwdriver and my handheld to finish up the process. Reinstalling the dust covers on the Z-axis, just the uh, assembly was in the reverse order of the disassembly. And same thing with the uh, front aluminum part. Here I am mounting the Z-axis motor and I'm actually mounting it incorrectly. It needs to go one quarter of a turn to the right. Uh, I fixed that off camera. As you can see there, it's correct. The next step in the process was assembling the uh, trays for the uh, gear tracks to ride in. And I'm over on the right side of the machine installing the, actually there's three brackets. There's two brackets which hold the tray itself and that's what I'm doing there. And then there's one bracket that mounts to the lower portion of the right side of the gantry which the cable track actually attaches to. And that's that bracket right there. The gear track itself attaches with two screws on each end and two nuts on each end. They're a little shallow, uh, but they work. And there's uh, a little bracket that goes on top of the plate behind the z-axis which is for the gear track along the x-axis and there's the tray being assembled to the back side of the gantry for the cable track for the uh, x-axis to ride in again four screws total two uh, at the top and two at the bottom Z-axis mounting is very similar. It's got a smaller cable track and it just takes a bracket on the front and a bracket in the rear that attaches to the Z-axis and the backside as well. And it uses T-nuts and bolts. Here you see me just measuring to make sure it's perfectly in place and then tightening it down. The next step was undoing the cable tracks themselves so you can run the cables in. I left a few that, uh, I didn't undo them all, I left a couple of them in place so I could uh, keep the cables in place and they wouldn't get uh, all cattywampus on me while I was doing the assembly. There's a lot of cables that come with your kit. These are proximity cables. You have proximity cables and uh, motor cables. And they're in various lengths, so you want to pay attention to your instructions. Proximity sensors go on really easy. They're fairly straightforward. I also used colored tape to identify which cable was going where. Uh, it made it really, really easy when assembling the to assembling all the cables to the plug and play electronics box. Here I was, you just saw a set of calipers being used to make sure that the proximity sensor on the Z axis was at the right level or at the right measurement. And I'm just running the cables one by one. The motor uh, 
uh, cables just snap into place. Here I am uh, getting the electronics boxes ready to mount on the aluminum extrusion and as you can tell the brackets are backwards. I had to go and redo these so I ended up doing those off camera uh, correcting it so when I uh, mount them they, you'll see that they are mounted actually correctly. This is the spindle cable. It's pretty beefy. Uh, I bought an 8.7 uh, horsepower spindle and that cable is pretty stout. And it's probably the hardest, the hardest cable to run out of everything to get it where it needed to go. But I managed. And then what you want to do is assemble it on the floor. You don't want to put those electronics boxes on the rail because then you're going to be laying on the ground trying to plug all those cables in. This is the tramming plate and I'm installing it on the back side of the spindle. Tramming plate just helps in adjusting the, uh, I guess you would say pitch and yaw maybe, <laughs> of the spindle itself, to use automotive terms. This is the mounting plate itself for the spindle. The tramming plate attaches to this, so you're just going to go ahead and mount it with the appropriate measurement and tighten it down. Tramming plate is an option. Here you see me taking the spindle, which I would guess weighs about 30 or 40 pounds, and manhandling it to at least get one screw in. I got the upper left side screw in, and then I was able to go through and do the other screws one by one. It would help if you had a second person, at least with this heavy spindle, but I did manage by myself, so if I can do it, you can do it. And this is a concentric nut that uh, actually adjusts the, the tram of the spindle itself. And here I am tightening up the electronics cable which feeds the spindle. And I'm securing all the cables in their cable track. I do have a pigtail hanging out. I'll let you try to figure out what that's for. That's 110 power. That More on that to be coming in a later video. This is the plug and play box for the spindle itself. And here I am getting ready to mount it. It's just a matter of getting up underneath it and manhandling it and putting it in place. Putting a couple nuts on. There's actually three mounting positions, two on the top and one on the side. And as you can tell, I had a little visitor. Shop dog decided to come in and lick me on the face. Well, at this point during the assembly, everything's all complete and I am in the testing phases to make sure everything is working correctly. Got Mach 4 fired up and I'm just checking all the axes to make sure they all work as they are supposed to, X, Y, and Z, and they appear to be working just fine. So I am a happy camper. Here I am just putting on the dust boot to the machine. And lastly, uh, we are attaching some branding, the Avid CNC logo plate. Well folks, that wraps up this three-part series on the Avid CNC assembly, at least my take on it. It was a lot of fun putting it together and bringing it to you in this format. I hope you have enjoyed this series. If this video content was something you have enjoyed, please hit the like button. Also, if you would like to see future CNC related content, please subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to hit that little bell icon to be notified when I post new content. Until the next time, keep those chips flying and be safe in your workshop. Take care, y'all.